Hey guys, welcome to Single Chef. I'm Matt Scholar. I am your classic single guy with the classic single guy fridge and ingredients. Differences, I know how to take these items and use them very simply to create a tasty meal you can't mess up. That's so good that even a woman will be impressed. But if you can't take my word for it, you can't not take our lovely Lily's word for it. Right, Lily? That's right, Matt. I'm going to taste your food and tell it like it is. I love it. Well, tonight, we're doing my take, the single chef's version, on some classic American fare stuff you get in every good bar. We're doing Philly cheesesteaks, awesome. yum yum, yeah. and buffalo wings with blue cheese. What do you think? I think that sounds great. And you know, Matt, you know I'm a Southern California girl. I heard that. I heard yeah. that before. And uh, I have a great Philly cheesesteak place for you in L.A. Let's hear it. So, you know, food trucks are all the rage right now. Absolutely. And there's a great food truck that travels around L.A. It's called the South Philly Experience. Okay. You can follow them on Twitter, go to where they are, get a fantastic Philly cheesesteak. Sounds I pretty good. It. All right, so fantastic. You have some competition tonight. All right, well, well, let's see if I'm up for the task. As far as wings goes, guys, um, uh, where I grew up in Rockland County, New York, there's a place called Sutter's Mill. When we were in high school and after high school, me and my boys, who are, some of them are watching tonight, will know, um, there's, they had 10 cent wing night. It was on Tuesday nights. We'd go there, we'd get 40 wings, and we'd literally just like eat till our heart's content. And they're still to this day, Sutter's Mill up in Rockland County, New York, the best buffalo wings I've ever had, like hands down. So I'm going to try and see if I can duplicate that, you know, a little bit. Are you ready to eat? Are you? I'm very ready. Cool. I'm pretty hungry myself. So let's get this show on the road. Now, as always, guys, we're going to be using our 10 single chef ingredients. And let me go over that list with you real quick. And again, that is ketchup. Soy sauce, Worcestershire. We've got mayonnaise and mustard. Got to have mayonnaise and mustard in your fridge, right guys? How easy is that? We've got some hot sauce, got some garlic powder, got my salt and pepper. Come on, no brainer. And of course, we got our, you know, singer, single chef like uh, ringer and that's some Thousand Island dressing. Um, now as always guys, I would go shopping before the show. So what I bought tonight, and it cost you, you know, about 15 bucks, you know, if you, you want to cater for some friends, you want to, you know, impress some, some of your friends, bring them over for the ball game. It's playoff time. This is great stuff for, like, you know, NBA hockey playoffs. All I bought was some, you know, some drumlets and wings for my buffalo wings. I bought a bunch of roast beef, which I'm going to use for my Philly cheesesteaks. I got some cheese. This is white American. I bought a couple of rolls. You know, I had an onion and a red pepper laying around the house, and I bought some blue cheese. That's about it. So I'm ready to get going here. If you have any questions, Lily's going to be online. This is an interactive live show. Hit, hit her up on the computer, and, uh, and she'll relay the questions to me. Let's get this thing rolling. Okay, so I was just cutting up my rolls while we were talking. But what I want to do first is, because the wings take a little bit to cook, is I'm going to throw some salt on my wings. I'm actually going to open this up because this is a little congested. Matt, we haven't... We have our first question. Cool. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Just give me one second. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to just salt these up a little bit. Wow, what the heck's up with this salt? <laughs> Something happened to the salt. <laughs> All right, so there's some salt on there, and I'm just going to drop these in the oil, and then I'll take our first question. Because you want to get these wings, we only have about, you know, 20 minutes on the show. want to get these cooking right away. So I'm going to drop these in. And then, what's our question? So, uh, it's more of a comment and less a question, but... Woo! By the way, sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah. I just want to let everyone know that I, I heated up our oil. There's a, you know, a lot of oil in a, in a pot over there because you've got to give it about 10 minutes to heat up to the right temperature. That's why you're hearing this noise. It's very hot and the wings are sizzling. Sorry, Lily, go ahead. No, it's cool. I'll, I'll just raise my voice a little and hopefully you all can hear me. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Mikey Mike 46 wants to know why you choose to use the cheese you do because he believes that the best is provolone. Uh -huh. Well, Mikey, Mike, I really appreciate you tuning in. It sounds like a new name. We haven't heard yours before online, but I'm going to try and answer that for you. See, what we do here on Single Chef is I do my version of these foods, so it may not always be exactly to recipe. When I've cooked cheesesteaks before, I've used white American cheese, which we have. I've used yellow American. I've even used cheddar. I have not used provolone, but I tell you what, we'll see how this goes, and, um, and maybe next time we'll use provolone. You can use any cheese you want, but that's a good question. I really appreciate you chiming in. Will you also be using Thousand Island dressing? Uh, I might throw a little Thousand Island on the cheesesteak. We'll see. I'm going to see how I feel. A lot, of, a lot of the way I cook in life, guys, and the way I've learned how to do this stuff is just I don't really go by recipes, you know. I don't measure stuff. I just kind of do it how I feel. We'll see how I feel after I'm done cooking the cheesesteaks, which reminds me, let's get cooking on the cheesesteaks. So I've got some rolls here. I'm just going to cut those up. 
And I, what I forgot to do before the show was turn on the oven because I want to bake these a little bit, just toast them a little bit. I'll do that right now. I think we'll be all right on time. So I'm just going to put the oven up to about 375 and let that warm up. And then we'll throw our rolls in there at the end just to crisp them up a little bit. But let's get going on the cheesesteaks. So I've got my onion here. I'm going to uh, cut up some onion and some bell pepper. And I'm going to let those saute in the, in the pan before I throw my roast beef on there. So guys, again, what my goal here is on this show and Single Chef, it's really just to um, make you guys want to go in your kitchen and cook and not be intimidated whatsoever because this stuff really is easy. Now you can get a lot fancier than, than the way I cook. Um, if you watch any of the cooking shows out there, I mean, there's a ton of them and there's a lot of good shows out there and there are people that know a lot more about me in terms of technique and whatnot. But I also know what I'm good at is just doing this stuff really simply and, it, and, like, and, and showing you guys. So all you have to do is do, you know, when it comes to cutting, I don't have any special technique either. I simply, you know, I like to slice it up a little small. So I'm just going to chop up that onion. You could keep your onion bigger so you've got longer strands, whatever you're into. Um, so I'm going to throw a little bit more onion in there. Just another, another piece right there. Matt, Garth W. just wants to let you know that the Windy City used mozzarella. Ah, Garth is a, that's a buddy of mine that I grew up with, I've known for a long, long time. He's reminding me of a place that I worked when I was a kid in, in high school. I would deliver pizzas and, and subs for a place called Windy City Cafe. So Garth said that what? That, that we used mozzarella, mozzarella. on the cheesesteaks? Yeah. All right, all right. I, I see. See, they, they, they apparently didn't get it right, too. They didn't use provolone, but every, to each their own. But they were good cheesesteaks. So I'm just going to put some oil in my skillet here. And just, you know, that, that skillet's been warming up, so it's nice and hot right now. And I'm going to chop up my bell pepper, and then we're going to saute these veggies real quick. Again, when it comes to, you know, your tastes, you may not be into onions, you may not be into peppers, or you may love them. Um, so you don't have to use them, but for me, I enjoy their flavor. Um, so I'm just going to cut up this bell pepper and just put it in sort of like thin slices like that. Instead of mincing it up like the onion, I prefer to just do long slices. It's going to give a nice color and texture to their dish. Um, so let's just I'm gonna use my hands. I, I always wash my hands before we start cooking. So Let those work a little bit. I'm actually going to cut a little bit more bell pepper into that. We're well, getting back to the Sutter's Mill wings. Garth, my buddy, you watching? Appreciate you being on tonight, bud. Um, he was one of my mates. We'd go there and we'd feast on. I literally we get 40 wings a piece, and we sit there for a couple hours and finish them. And then right after the, right after we were done gorging on wings, we'd go to the ice cream place and just like cool down by eating like pint of ice cream. I think we gained a few pounds back in those days, but it was sure it was fun. Put a little more bell pepper in there. Matt, we have another question. Excellent. This is more of a trivia type question. Trivia, uh oh. Yeah. Here we this go. Is from Stump the single chef. <laughs> the real Puxatani Phil All right. wants to know, do you know why Philadelphia became famous for the cheesesteak? Do I know why they became famous for it? No. <laughs> I don't. I didn't see that episode of Discovery Channel, Why Philadelphia is Famous for Cheesesteaks. Um, would, would Phil like to fill me in on why they do? Because I'd love to hear it. Uh, let's find out. Okay. While Phil's searching for the answer, I mean... And what about Buffalo for Buffalo Wings? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, why are they famous for it? Yeah. Well, I guess because I'm going to take a guess. I mean, they, 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 they created the like, recipe with the hot sauce and the butter and you know cook their wings and mix it in and since it was from buffalo it makes sense to be called buffalo wings just so you know guys a buffalo wing is not a wing of a buffalo it's that you know it's it's, it's actually just the buffalo sauce so there are a few people out there probably like, oh thanks for clearing that up i didn't know but seriously i used to think that too um when i was like five i'm gonna put a little salt we're having we're having technical problems this is a live show <laughs> uh, i've never seen salt just like kind of crystallized like that until it's a big clump. And I'm not going to put any salt on there, but I will put pepper. I'm going to put, I'm going to season the roast beef with a little bit of pepper. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to put that on our skillet in a second over the veggies. Does anybody else in the studio have an idea why um, Philly cheesesteaks 
or why, why they became famous in Philadelphia? Anybody? Oh, good. Yes, I, I know. Okay, please tell me. I was keeping it from you. What's up? Philadelphians Pat and Harry Olivieri are often credited with inventing the sandwich by serving chopped steak on hoagie rolls in the early 1930s. Early 1930s? Yeah. Did you Google that? No. You just knew that offhand? I just pulled it out of my that, Lily, head. Lily, you continue to surprise me every week. <laughs> oh, I always will. Um, <laughs> I'm, seasoning my, I'm seasoning my roast beef with just a little bit of a garlic powder. Just going to throw a little bit on there. Again, you know, if I made this last week or a week from now, I might not. But this is what I'm, you know, kind of like, I'm feeling the garlic powder on the roast beef, so I'm going to do that. And I'm ready to, uh, just about ready to throw these, uh, throw this on. Just let the veggies cook for another second or two. Um, as far as the wings go, you want to get your oil really hot before you, you know, throw your wings in there. I threw, I had this much of our canola oil. I put about three quarters in that, in that big pot over there and I let that warm up for about 15 minutes. Um, we were using electric stove, so on a count of one to 10, I put it on about a seven and a half and eight. Got really nice and hot. And just before we started the show, I tested it. It was perfect, so I threw those wings in. So the wings are going to take about, you know, 12, 15 minutes. You know, I'm not going to give you exact time, but I can check them periodically. Right now, they're probably halfway cooking. But you want to give them a, at least a 20-minute window to prepare these wings. So we have, and I don't know if you could tell, guys. I'll pull, I'll pull one of these out and just show you on camera to see what's going on here. If you can see here, so they're starting to turn golden brown, so... I'm going to give them another, you know, another five, ten minutes. I'm going to say five to seven minutes. But they're, the oil temperature is perfect. You don't, if it starts smoking, then that's not good because that means the oil is burning. But right now it's at a good temperature. So, all right, I have my veggies here. Those are looking good. You don't want to burn your veggies when you're cooking either. You just want them to get nice and crisp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this roast beef and I'm just going to pile it over that stuff and just kind of mix it around. It's starting to smell really good. Well, good. Yeah. And you know, like, this time of year, you know, there's a lot of good sports going on. We just had, you know, we, we've, got, we've got playoffs going on. We've got hockey. We've got NBA. You know, a lot of people are in sports bars. Summer's around the corner, you know, whether you're in the East Coast, the West Coast, or somewhere in between. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to bars, watching, t watching games, and they're eating this kind of food. And it's cool to be able to know to make it, too. Um, you know, so you can tell your friends, hey, instead of going go to the bar, We'll grab our beers, go to my place. I'm going to whip some stuff up for you, surprise you guys. So hopefully one of you guys or a couple of you people out there will try that. Matt, that's one of my favorite things to do. What's I love, that? I love going to like sports parties at people's houses and having bar food, but it's homemade. But homemade bar yeah, food, yeah, yeah exactly. It's, awesome. it's like tastes better than it does in the bar. Well, sometimes if they do it right. And, if you know, you know, do it right. If they do it right, exactly. It's fun. It's also fun, you know, just to go to friends' places, eat some good food, watch some good sports. Okay, so as you can see, I've got that roast beef in there. I'm just mixing it around so the onions and the peppers kind of get mixed in with the beef. And obviously, roast beef is already cooked, so it's not about really cooking it too much, but I do want it to get from, I want it to go to, from pink to brown. I do want to put a little sear on there. So I turned up my uh, heat a little bit because it wasn't hot enough, and I'm going to let that just sit for a second. Now I'm going to take one of our single chef condiments. I got some Worcestershire. I'm going to pour a little, little Worcestershire on there. We have another question whenever you're... I am ready. A moment. All right. Um, SoCal Susie wants to know if you should, like if this is a rule, you yeah. should drink beer with the sandwich and wings. If you should drink beer with a sandwich and wings? Yeah. I don't know about a rule. I don't know if this is going to be like, you know, state, uh, a, a stature in, 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 in California, but I think it's a great idea. Absolutely. Yes. I think it's a great idea too. Yeah, in I fact, I wouldn't mind busting out one <laughs> myself <laughs> and having one. So, I remember I turned the stove on before the oven to to uh, to toast our our bread. Let's get our bread in there because I'm sure our oven is kind of nice and hot right now. And uh, we have another question Please. from Haiti. This uh, Haiti is the name, and that would be my mom. From, this is from New Mexico. Yeah, mom in New Mexico. All right, mom in New Mexico. I, we, we, her, her, it's, uh, it, it looks like it's spelled Haiti, but it's actually pronounced Heidi or oh, Ide if you're in Panama. What's up, mom? Uh, is roast beef the only, is the only cut you can use? No, not at all. In fact, I mean, you could go buy yourself, you know, uh, 
you know, you can, fro you can get the frozen minute steak. Um, you know, I'm sure various chefs or cooks across the country use different kinds of cuts of meat. It just so happens that when I've experimented over the years with, um, with making cheesesteaks, I usually just get roast beef, and it turns out really good. So I kind of stuck with that tonight. But there's no, um, you know, actually, I don't know what the exact rule is, what they do in Philly. Um, but if, anyone is, if anybody knows, if they're from Philly, they can type in and let us know what kind of meat they use. But I guarantee you this is going to be good. But thanks for, thanks, for, uh, thanks for asking, Mom. I'll call you later. Okay, so I've got my bread in the oven. That's going to toast. I've got my wings. They're, they're looking really good over here. And it's just going to be, you know, I'm going to let them be for another, like, maybe three minutes. And then we'll take the wings out. And we'll, I'll show you how to make the wing sauce. It's real easy. And I've got my cheese steaks here working. Well, actually, the cheese isn't on there yet. I'm going to throw that in in just a minute. So I can see that the roast beef is browning, which is nice. And it also it's going to condense a little bit. That's why I just threw a bunch in there. I'm making three sandwiches tonight. It's going to condense, and it's going to get, you know, the fat's going to burn off a little bit. So you can get a hunk, you know, if you're, if you're cooking for four or five guys or gals or whoever, you can buy yourself, like, a couple pounds of roast beef. And, and, uh, and, you know, fix up your steaks. You, you can go liberal on the meat. Okay, so... Hey, hey Matt. Yes. I'm going to start... Uh, I'm sorry, you got another question? No, I have another question. Wow, questions are pouring in tonight. I love it. Who's, uh, who's up? This one is interesting. Um, this... Matt, you're cute. 411. Ha <laughs> One Who, of our newest... Uh, Guests, I guess. What is their name again? Matt, you're cute. Four one one. That's the name of the. That's the name of the person online. Yeah. I have my first stalker. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Apparently you do. No, yeah. And she wants to know how. I'm assuming it's a it's a young lady, but let's just assume. <laughs> um. She wants to know how you know the timing of everything because you're so good with that. Well, thank you, Matt Stalker one four five. Um. <laughs> That's a good question. You know what? It's just, uh, I just—I kind of tune in when I'm cooking, and I just get dialed in. And you know, sometimes I'll have some music on. I'll be drinking a beer or whatever. But but I just I just have a good sense of awareness of what's going on, and and it seems to all work together. I, I can't give you a formula for how I got to be that way. Maybe it was working in restaurants. I I worked a little restaurants quite a bit as as a young guy. You know, mm -hmm. when I was, you know, in New York and L.A. And as a waiter, you have to time stuff. You have to time when your entrees, your appetizers, this and that. So I think that might have been where I got my timing. Um, but if you want to send in a picture, you, <laughs> you can. So we can maybe, you know, we can talk about it over a glass of wine. Good idea. Okay, so let me just show you. If on camera here, you guys can see my, cheap, my steaks are looking really good. Um, we have a little bit of gravy in there from the Worcestershire and from the fat that's burned down from the... Um, from the meat, so I'm going to start applying. Actually, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to take this off real quick, and I'm going to chop these up, and I'm going to put them back. And we'll finish off our steaks real soon with the cheese. So I'm just going to take that off, and you can get a, you can get a look on there. That stuff looks looks and smells really that good. really good. Okay, so let me get a fork, and I'm going to chop this up. So. So when we put it on the sandwich, it's a lot easier to, you know, lay across the bread. I'm just going to chop that up real good. It smells really good. I can, you know, I can smell the Worcestershire. I can smell the onions, the peppers, a little gravy. It's going to be really nice. All right, so we're almost done with that. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to put it back in our pan. And we're almost good to go here, guys. All right, all right, all right. And I'm going to check my bread in a second. Because that should be crispy but not burnt. So, here we go, putting this back. And I'm going to throw cheese on there and we're going to melt that up real quick. See how easy this is, guys? I mean, come on. I'm, it's like a 20-minute deal. I love it. Throw a nice amount of cheese on there. We want it nice and cheesy. Okay, let's check our bread whilst we cover that and let the cheese melt. Did I just say waltzed? <laughs> I think I did. I don't know where that came from. All right. Oh, perfect. Matt, we have a question that's kind of uh, 
kind of an important question just because we want to keep our viewers filled in. Sure. Um, this is from Woozle316. Okay, let's hear the question. Who unfortunately missed the very first part of the show and wants to know, is anything added to the bread or is it just plain bread that you Well, toast? the way I'm making it tonight, it's just plain bread. Um, I mean, if you wanted to like maybe put a little butter on there, you could do it, but we're gonna have so much flavor on that plate as, uh, on that bread already with our cheese steak and everything. We really don't need anything else. But good question, and um, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, for chiming in, for coming in the room. By the way, guys, we're here every Monday night, 6 p.m. L.A. time, theroomlive.com. Just so you know. Okay, so let's check our oh guys, our wingies, our wingies are ready. Yeah. Tommy like wingy. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you guys on camera there. Can you really see that? Okay, those wings are ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out and we're gonna work on our wing sauce and this takes two seconds. I'm actually gonna switch the cheesesteak over here and turn this burner off. Okay, so I'm gonna take these wings and I'm gonna put them in here. And then you'll be able to see these before I do the sauce, just what they're supposed to look like. This is almost what they look like in Sutter's Mill back home. <laughs> Matt, one of our viewers wants to know um, how much how much does this whole meal cost? Do you think this cost me from top to bottom from the so I, here? Let me just show you guys real quick on the camera here. Okay, those are nice and golden brown, crispy, perfect. Um, from the roast beef, cost me about seven bucks. The wingies cost me about six bucks, and then you know I'd buy some blue cheese, but that blue cheese is going to last us for a while. So all in all, it's about like you know I'd say about twelve, fifteen dollars. You know, very cheap. And we're not cooking just for one here. We're cooking for like three or four, so. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, normally what I would do, I would do this on a, on a hot skillet, but I don't have an extra hot skillet. So I'm just going to pour the sauce. This is just some hot sauce right over the wings, okay? And I'm going to take some butter. And this butter is nice and soft because it's been sitting out for a while. And I'm going to put half a stick of butter in there. And I'm just going to toss that around for a minute. Okay, I'm just going to toss that and let that butter melt. And if it doesn't melt, I'm just going to nuke it for like 30 seconds. Which, you know what I think I'm going to do? Because with this show, I do stuff on the fly. So this is done right. I'm going to nuke it for 30 seconds. Because that butter needs to melt. So let's pop this in the microwave real quick. And our cheese steaks are almost done. I'm just going to put that on there for 30 seconds to see if that does the trick. I'm ready to take these cheese steaks off here. Can we just tell our viewers how good it smells in here? How what? How good it smells in here. I, guys, I, 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 yeah, I mean, it, it, you're hearing it from Lily. Lily's our, you know. It smells so good. She's our resident truth teller. I'm just going to mix that up so all that cheese melts there real nicely. But I think this is going to be pretty good. So let me just show you on camera here what that's looking like. So we got our cheese all mixed in there. You can see our peppers, our onions, we have some pepper and salt on there. And I'm just going to start plating these bad boys right now. Those onions are starting to get to me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. In a good way? I mean, I'm starting to tear. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. You know what? One of my friends told me, run your knife under cold water when you're cutting onions. Because someone asked us a question a few shows ago, what do you do to prevent from crying? Run your knife under cold water, apparently. Which I haven't tried yet. Um, but hey, man, it sounds plausible. Did I just say plausible? My vocabulary is kicking. All right. So we're almost done. I have one more question. Cool. It's uh, from our viewer. It's your mom one. Wants to know, um, just wants to make sure that this is a low-cal meal, right? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This is not a low-cal meal. I mean, I'm, we're using like, you know, the roast beef is lean. I'm using some cheese on here so that, you know, we all know cheese is not, the, you know, a low-cal uh, product. Um, wings that are, you know, fried in oil. This is not a health, again, this is not like a healthy meal. It's not, it's, it's healthy for the soul though, okay? But it's really good if like, you know, if you got a hangover too, it's great. But also if you're just gonna watch some sports and you're, you're gonna hit the gym tomorrow, then you have no worries, but just enjoy it. Okay, so wings are just about there. I'm gonna toss those again. And Lily, if you wanna come up here. Definitely. I think we're ready to do this. Good. So let me show you guys what I'm doing. Actually, you use this fork. So basically what we did is we just melted that butter with our hot sauce. And 
Look, see that? Mm -hmm. Like that? Those wings are ready. All right, so we're just going to close these up. And we've got our Philly cheesesteak. Sometimes you go to places and they put gravy on there, you know, for a little extra flavor, but these are already going to be very flavorful because we added that Worcestershire, Worcestershire and all that stuff. So there's a nice amount of, like, uh, of sauce on there. So I'm going to take these wings, put a few oh, on here. If so you good. want, you can just unload a little blue cheese on yeah. each plate, and we'll be ready to eat. That was easy. <laughs> uh, all right, I get a... You know what? Let's just put the blue cheese on a big on a plate here, and we'll just all di we'll just dip in. We'll all just right. use that for the blue cheese. Great. Does that work? Anyway, guys, that's it. That's our Philly cheesesteak. That's my single chef version on cheesesteak, buffalo wings with blue cheese. Um, as always, appreciate you joining me here in the roomlive.com. Check us out next Monday, 6 p.m. LA time. And guys, learn how to do this because we all don't want to be single forever, right? Mm -hmm. See you next time. Actually, let's take a bite first. Yeah, let's do it. Let's take a bite first. It is a cooking show. All right. <laughs> Ready? You go cheesesteak, I go wingy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Right. That's mostly bread. Hold on. It's like Sutter's Mill back home. Mmm. I'm telling you, it's pretty good. This tastes really good. Yeah? Yeah, I'm getting some meat. Get another bite in there. Let's check it out. I have to. All right. I'm double dipping. Wow. Good. Yeah, it's good. Yup. <laughs> it's good. You're not just saying that, right? No, no, no. I would not just say that. <laughs> I tell it like it is. Cool. All right, it's guys. Really good. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.